welcome and welcome back to my YouTube channel, hashtag Movie Bay. I am Movie Bay, and in this video, I'm going to be recapping and reviewing episodes one and two of Netflix's season four of The Circle. Now, before we get too into it, though, I want y'all to drop down and hit the subscribe button. Thank you. Because here on Movie Bay, I do reviews, reactions, and commentary to movies and television. And if that is the type of content that you like, you might as well hit the subscribe button, okay? Okay. Now, let's review and recap real, real quick. Season 2, The Circle. Now, if you found me from my Circle reviews, or if you are a long-time subscriber and you already know about my Circle reviews, let me explain. The people who made it to the finals, I did not care for. So I didn't watch the reunion or the meetup or i didn't give a fuck okay i didn't care but i did see that um i believe her name is delisha that she won and out of the people who were left i'm happy that she took it home season three was a pretty lackluster season um the highlight was when they did the grandma wrong aside from that it was kind of i did like that james won out of the people who were left and looking at the other black guy, I can't remember his name, but he was fine until he went home. So y'all know how they go. Now, season four, let's talk about it. First up, we meet Frank. He is 28 from Maryland and he's a school social worker. He is a body positive LBGTQ and his lip gloss is popping and his cheekbones is popping okay and he comes into their circle playing as himself then you have you lean 25 brand marketing consultant from san fran um she's first generation asian american and she can dress okay she's obsessed with social media obviously she's 25 and she is also going in as herself now one thing i didn't like that she said was millennials are burnt out and jaded and gen z is exciting and positive girl where the fuck are you living okay um first off we noticed that the profiles get two pictures off bat now and i think that's a cool addition because you get your profile pic and then you get like a little follow-up pic just to get a better idea of who these people are and her profile pic is cute as fuck then we meet john who's a 24 year old content creator he is italian and he is catfishing as his 63 year old mom named carol I personally feel like this is not a good idea because old people in the circle, they're too nice, it sticks out, and you might get to the end, but you're not going to win. Next, we meet Alyssa in her Punani pillow, okay? Alyssa is 27 from New York, and she's a sex coach assistant. Now, I feel like she's beautiful with her pear-shaped body. She's really, she's popping, okay? Like, she's gorgeous. Um... And she's going in as herself. Now, I feel like she might be the first one out because pretty girls usually are in this game. Um, people usually think that they're catfish, so we'll see how that goes. Um, my first initial thought is too much sex and it's annoying. <laughs> like, I understand, like, you love this job. Like, this is, yeah. But I feel like she's going to talk about it a lot and it's going to annoy me. Also, it's Important to mention that she is also Italian. And John, a.k.a. Mama Karen, is Italian. And I feel like he's going to want to flirt with her, but obviously he can't because he's a 63-year-old woman. All right, so the circle chat opens really briefly, and we start off with Yu Ling being a chatty Cathy with his long-ass hello message, like, good God, girl, get a grip. Um, John slash Carol, Mama Carol, is already thinking about alliance vibes with Alyssa because they're both Italian, and the first four are just vibing. That is when we meet Krissa. She's a 31-year-old um, retired Globe Trotters player, a beautiful lesbian woman. She's a mom and a wife, and I already love her personality because she... There was like, uh, in her little interview, she was like, I'm coming in the circle as your mama. <laughs> I thought that was so funny because like, funny. Uh, but no, like I'm feeling her personality, feeling her vibes already. She's going in as herself because who else would you want to be? Then we meet Josh B, who goes by Brew. He is 25 and a radio host from the Midwest, but he is currently living in Hollywood because of course he is. He's already social media popping. He has 3.5 million followers. And he is also going in as himself. He plans to be the circle bestie. 
and he wants to prove that nice guys finish first. I feel like he is goofy um, off top when he was rubbing the the wood and sliding with the door. But I feel like he is thinking too hard and I don't want that to trip him up in the game later. Our final starting cast member is Parker. She's 21 year old student um, who lives in Miami. She says she is a hot ass bitch playing to be manipulative and cutthroat. Now she is catfishing as her 56 year old dad named Paul because she herself would not trust a sorority girl in the circle. So she's not going to come in as herself. Now, first and foremost, let's talk about um, um, her daddy is fine as hell. Okay, <laughs> period. And if I was in the circle, I would definitely flirt with that profile. Because I'm looking for a shook. Um, <laughs> so John slash Carol is not feeling Paul because he is playing a similar character, meaning an older adult person. And oh, baby, more than you know, okay? Like, legit. It's a young person playing an old person just like you. And Parker peeps it. Uh, Carissa, not Carissa, Carissa isn't feeling the oldies either. Krissa, we in the same boat. And Yuling has a weakness for bruised turtleneck because mm, modesty. <laughs> um, and some people in the circle recognize Bru. Now let's kick this shit off. Everybody's in the circle, so they start a circle chat. Um, Alyssa decides to ask the group what would the title of their memoirs be just to get a better idea of their personalities. Um, and Parker does not know what a memoir is. Big yikes. Um, I know seventh graders who, well, shit, sixth graders who are at least introduced to what a memoir was. But um, Alyssa says that her title will be Whining and Whining. Bruce says it's a brutal life. <laughs> Play on words. Don't you love the puns? Um, Frank said his memoir will be entitled Titties and Tequila. And Yuling says her memoir will be called All That in Dim Sum. OMG, like, first off, clever as fuck. They think fast as fuck on their feet. But, um, Parker is not the only one who doesn't know what a memoir is because Krissa doesn't either. Now, when Krissa mentioned that she doesn't know what a memoir is, Parker, who is playing her 50-something-year-old dad, um, decides that she would admit it as well. Now, Parker, Why? Why? Because even if you didn't know what a memoir was, use your context clues, baby girl. People are coming up with titles to explain their personalities. So come up with a title that explains your personality. You don't even have to know what a memoir is. Just read the room, sis. Read the room. Now, the first circle game starts and it's called Been There, Done That. They ask a series of questions about who's popular in high school, who's ever walked the red carpet, Yada, yada, yada. This game was kind of boring. Nothing interesting really came from it aside from Paul, a.k.a. Parker, was giving some wishy-washy answers, and the group is judging her based off of it. Um, alert comes, and it is time to rate the players. Now, they haven't had long to chalk. To chalk? What? They haven't had long. I want to say chat, then I want to say talk. I didn't know which one. So let's go with it. They haven't had long to talk to each other. <laughs> so they're really going to have to base it off of the game they played, Alyssa's memoir question, and commonality. Because you automatically link up or vibe with somebody that you have something in common with. Let me explain. So just like season two, um, if I was on season two and ratings came this quick, I would have saved everybody from Texas because that is our commonality. That is what we have in common. And these players did literally the same thing. So Chris puts Frank first. Um, yeah, they might have been vibing, but they're also LBGTQ. Um, Frank puts Mama Carol first because he just likes the Mama, um, Mama Bear vibes. Mama Carol puts Alyssa first because they're Italian. Commonality. Hello. Brew puts Chris first. Um... And he puts Parker slash Paul last. Now, this is important to note because Brew was one of the people, Brew and Mama Carol, were one of the people um, who wasn't feeling Paul, who thought that he was wishy-washy based off of the memoir question in the game. Yuling puts Frank first because of vibes. Um, Parker slash Paul decides to put Alyssa in last place 
because they won't have much in common. And Alyssa puts Krissa last place because she is threatened because Krissa is also a lovable, likable personality. So in the circle chats after ratings, Parker slash Paul decides to start a message with the guys. Frank talks about hosting his uh, fashion schlup. Sorry, hosting a fashion show, which is obviously a shameless plug, but go ahead, do your thing. And Frank is warming up to Paul. Now, Brew talks about his memorable interview with Carrie Underwood, and Brew feels like Parker slash Paul is trying too hard to try to talk to people now. Um, Carol starts a message with the girls, and Chris is thinking just like me, pulling the mama bear card. And I would honestly... That shit would get on my nerves if I was in this game. Like, please stop. You, you Please stop. You nobody mama in here. But this conversation gets interesting because it turns into vagina talk. It turns into vagina talk. And Mama Carol, a.k.a. John, is a very uncomfortable with this. But he plays it cool and he ends up um, not blowing his cover, I should say. After the chats, the circle gets an alert and the ratings are in. And seven plays is parker slash paul sixth place is yuling fifth place is brew fourth is Alyssa. third is Krissa. and top two is mama carol slash john and frank not surprised by this top two honestly saw it coming so frank gets a separate alert though and he gets to choose a new player to join the circle from two profiles they give him two very handsome young men, Jerry, who is 28 and a child's Arthur, and Trey, who is a 24-year-old fashion designer. Um, for a strategy, I personally would choose the person who is least likable because I don't want to mess up my chances in the circle. Um, so I honestly would have chosen Jerry because, I mean, he might be likable, but no, not as likable as me. Um, the new player that Frank uh, chooses will be going... Oh, my bad. The new player that Frank chooses will be played by the fucking Spice Girls. So, now, I, personally, I really want them to keep reality TV, especially competition shows, to regular, average, everyday people. I feel like that's what make reality fun. Um, I really hate that they try to incorporate celebrities in it because they already have their fame and their notoriety. But let's see what's in store for episode two. Now, in episode two, we start off by meeting Scary Spice and Baby Spice, a.k.a. Mel B and Emma Button. Now, I am a huge Spice Girls fan. Like, I listen to them like, it is nobody's business even to this day, okay? Now, they're coming in the circle and they know that they're catfishing, but they don't know who they are catfishing as. So, I feel like this is a setup for their failure. Until we find out that the longer they stay in the game, it will up everybody else's chances at the prize money. So something is telling me that production's gonna push them to the end. Something's just telling me. All right. So um, they get to be Jerry, the 28-year-old child's Arthur. Yes, Frank chose Jerry to come to the game just like I would have done. Um, I feel like it is hilarious seeing them trying to write their bio. And I am enjoying the Spice Girls soundtrack. Now, immediately... I already get the vibes that this is now the Spice Girls show, which is exactly why I don't like celebrities coming on reality competition shows with average people. Because editing wise, even though they are very entertaining, please do not get me wrong. They are cracking me up, but they're taking the shine away from the average people. OK, and I I personally don't like that in my competition shows. Um, so um jared is being played by the spice girls and parker slash paul um i'm sorry and they are not feeling parker slash paul um after they get to view everybody's profile i don't know what it is nobody likes paul i would have been all on paul's ass because he is fine the circle chat is open and first off can we applaud brew for uh texting with grammar i mean he's talking about jared comma 
he is like on it okay um and mama carol is also not feeling paul's congratulations on her influencer spot now the first circle game well technically the second circle game but it's, you know circle game of this episode is cake me as i am and you have to decorate a cake representing your personality chris's cake includes basketball lbgtq and her family people are impressed by it jared slash the spice girls um people can't believe a man made their cake Yu Ling represents her culture very well. Frank says, um, I'm sorry, Frank's cake just has gold hearts on it. And I personally didn't get a lot of personality from his cake. I mean, it was a happy face at the top. It had fucking hearts all over it. I It just didn't say much to me. Um, Alyssa's cake is about families, sex, and a pocket rocket. And this girl is literally her job. Brew, um, his cake is decorated nice, but... Um, he puts, it's on the inside is what matters. And I feel like people will think that is a catfish. Matter of fact, Krissa thought, mm, catfish vibes. Paul, um, people think that Paul's cake is decorated too nicely to be a man. Um, I feel like that the cake was messy, um, up close, but on the picture, it did look nice. So I understand people's suspicion, but Mama Carol who said that she's a baker, her cake did not look professional at all. Um, I do feel like, though, he did a good job making it girly and it emphasized her family with her name at the top, meaning that she is the head of the household. I personally think that he did a good job. So the winner for me is Carol uh, because it gives out the personality and I feel like I interpreted the message that he wanted to send. Um, and Yu Ling's cake is the prettiest to me. But the chat votes for Krista. So that's that on that. Circle chat. Uh, Brew starts a circle chat with Yu Ling and Alyssa and they come out with a thruple. Okay. Um, Parker slash Paul starts a chat with Mama Carol and the conversation goes good. They're talking about family and kids and that is when, um, not Parker, got these damn catfish. John slash Mama Carol gets the vibes that Paul might be his daughter Parker because she's majoring in communications just like I am. And if I'm doing this, she can be doing that. And let me tell you, I didn't think Mama Carol was going to make it to the end. But how John is playing, he's playing very, very well. Mind you, I majored in communication. So <laughs> reading people, that shit is what the fuck we do, for real. Jared starts a chat with Frank and Krissa. And it looks like we have another alliance on our hands. By the way, I must reiterate that the Spice Girls are really making this episode hilarious as fuck. Um, what I can say is that this season is, I feel like that their alliances are built more genuinely. It's kind of like based off of conversation and it's like, Hey, girl gang. Hey, thruple. Hey, you know what I'm saying? Like it's really, they're going off of vibes versus season two. I feel like they were just hopping in alliances, um, as strategy and they really didn't give a fuck about the person who they were in an alliance with so i will say that about this season now the chat gets an alert though and it is time to block okay so mama carol and frank they go to the influencer circle mama carol wants to save Alyssa, and frank wants to save Krissa. That's cool because mama carol has a, a girl gang quote unquote alliance with them anyhow um, so Mama Carol has the upper hand. Now they agree that Yu Ling was dope at first, but then she kind of fell back. And Paul was kind of slow to open up, but it might be a strategic move. Um, Frank also mentions that he wants to save Brew, even though Mama Carol is kind of like, it's whatever. So nobody's a hundred percent sure on who they want to block, but after a while, they come to a decision. And Mama Carol will deliver the message. We get an alert and Parker slash Paul is indeed the one who gets blocked. Not a surprise there. Like I said, strategically speaking, one, she did mess up. But two, it's kind of like circle tradition that one of the pretty girls goes home first. Catfish or not, obviously, one of the pretty girls go home first. 
Um, I personally don't feel like this was a good idea for Mama Carol because when they find out Parker was a catfish, um, they might think, oh, what about this other old person? And I don't know if they forgot, but Parker gets to meet somebody on her way out. And I can bet my bottom dollar she's going to go see Mama Carol. Because another circle tradition is the two people who are influencers, the first episode, are usually at the bottom the next episode. They leave us on a cliffhanger, and I'll also leave you on a cliffhanger. Please be sure you double tap this video. Is that a thing on YouTube? No. Just hit the like button, okay? Hit the subscribe button, and stay tuned for when I drop episodes three and four of season four's The Circle. I'll see you next time. It's a date.